So when we zoom in on the details of what's happening in the cortex, you find that different regions are specialized for very particular things. So for example, the back part of the brain here is specialized for vision. So even though your eyes are in the front, that information crosses the entire territory of the brain and ends up being processed in the back of the brain. On the side here is where hearing takes place. This is the, where the information that comes in through your ears actually also goes across the brain and gets, uh, gets processed here in the auditory cortex, as it's called. Along here is the part that processes all the signals from your body. So your skin is one giant sheet of, of sensor material, essentially. And so everything, it, it, it uh, senses touch and vibration and heat, and all that information streams back into your brain, and it's this part of your brain where that's getting processed. And in this intermediate territory, that's where all of those senses come together. And that's why when we experience the world, it's what we call multisensory. It's in that fashion. We don't just see things and hear them and, and touch them separately, but we actually, when we touch things, have a sense of hearing it and feeling it and seeing it all at the same time. It feels like a single unified experience. So you have parts of the cortex that are very specialized, and then all the rest of the cortex is where that information flows together, and we have this multi-sensory experience of the world. So let's talk about the senses. So when you think about the senses, you might think, OK, I've got eyes, I've got ears, I've got a nose, a mouth, I've got fingertips. So that's five senses. But is that really where the action is taking place? It turns out, no. All the action is taking place in the brain. And these are just peripheral devices that do their own specialized duty and then convert the information into electrical signals in the brain. That's the language of the brain. And everything has to get converted into that common language in the brain. So for example, the eyes pick up on, on light signals called photons, and they convert that into electrical signals. And that's all the brain sees. Remember that your brain is actually captured in darkness and silence. Your brain doesn't actually see anything except for these electrical signals that are being passed by the eyes. Same with hearing. Sound waves, air compression waves that move, hit your eardrum, and that carries information about what somebody is saying, but from there it gets converted into electrical signals that goes into your brain. With touch, when you touch things, you have different types of receptors in your fingertips that converts to electrical signals that go up to your brain. Smelling and taste, those are what, are what we call the chemical senses because you're actually de detecting chemicals that are floating through the air or that you put on your tongue, and again, they get converted to electrical signals. Now the magic is that the brain looks at all these electrical signals coming in and has an experience based on this. And that's what the senses actually are. They're actually taking place inside here. Now how do we know that's true? Well, here's an example. You don't actually need your eyes for vision. How do you know that? Well, every night when you go to sleep, your eyes are closed, and yet you have full, rich visual experience in your dreams. What's happening in your dreams when you're seeing is exactly the same processes that happen when you're awake. The only difference is that when you're awake and your eyes are open, there's a little bit of information that comes in through these two holes in the skull, and it anchors what your visual system is doing. It determines what that activity is. When your eyes are closed, that activity can spin off any way that it wants to. And that's why in dreams you can have these very bizarre things that you're seeing but when we measure what's happening here in the visual system, it's exactly the same process. So being awake is like awake dreaming. It's the same thing. And it's for reasons like this that we know that vision isn't fundamentally about the eyes. It's fundamentally about what's happening back here. Same with hearing, same with touch, and so on. And in various disorders, for example, something called schizophrenia, people can have hallucinations. They can believe that they're seeing or hearing something that's not actually out there in the outside world. Now how can this happen? Again, it's because seeing and hearing is all about what's happening in here. And if your brain thinks that something is happening and there's a voice or a, a person out there, then that's what you will experience. Now, people typically think there are five senses, but it turns out there are many more senses that, um, that your body can deliver. So for example, 
take vibration. So your body is very sensitive to vibration. And if, uh, if you or your parents have cell phones, you know that vibrations in your pocket are something that you can pick up on. Another sense that doesn't get enough attention is that your body knows exactly where your limbs are at all time. You have a sense of where your body is even when you close your eyes. Why? Because you actually have signals coming from the muscles telling you about their, their stretch. So here, my body's telling me something about the state of contraction of my muscle, and here it's telling me that it's relaxed and everywhere in between. And you have this for all of your muscles in your body, and so body position is, is a sense that you have. Um, things like your orientation. So if you suddenly were to tilt me sideways, I would know it even if nobody told me because I have a system that tells me my orientation with respect to the ground. So in fact, there are not just five senses. That's just a convenient way that people talk about it. There are many more senses in the body, all of which feed into the brain and tell you what's going on both in the outside world and also internally inside your world. So the way we see the world involves lots of senses all at the same time. Typically when we're interacting with something, we're hearing it and feeling it and touching it. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of information out of things this way. For example, when somebody hands you uh, a gift at holiday time, you know, you pick it up, you feel how heavy it is, you shake it, you tell you, you look at it, you do all sorts of things. That's pretty much how we interact with the world in general. And so when we're teaching or we're learning, the really important thing to keep in mind is that it's useful to have many of the senses stimulated. What often happens, of course, is that somebody will uh, merely lecture in front of a classroom. And so for the children who are auditory learners, that's fine for them. But for the kids who are visual learners or interactive learners, it's not getting into their brain in the most useful manner. And so one thing that's very useful for teaching and learning is making sure that material is always getting attacked from every angle you can. Look at something, hear it said, touch it, interact with it. And one good trick, of course, is always teach it to somebody else. If you can teach it to someone else, that's a really good way of getting it down into the system.